following on from our preview video of the Fanatec CSL DD, go and check that out if you've not seen it yet. I thought a lot of you guys would like a more long-winded and inappropriate for a 15-minute video talk about the differences between the 5Nm power pack and the high power 8Nm power pack. And in order to discuss those differences, I thought I would load up Assetto Corsa and the Nordschleifer with the Porsche RSR and do a full lap with each power supply and uh, talk about what it's actually like with those power supplies whilst we drive. So, fasten your seatbelts and let's get rolling. Okay, so in Assetto Corsa, I've set up everything so that uh, I'm getting as much detail as possible from the steering wheel. Um, and from the simulator. I might have to move the uh, strength up and down a tiny bit if I get clipping through certain sections, but I should be about there for getting the absolute most possible from this wheel and the sim. Now, I picked Assetto Corsa for this because, it, simply put, it has the best force feedback of all the driving simulators. No other driving simulator has as detailed and communicative force feedback as Assetto Corsa. Uh, under the limit, on the limit, over the limit, the actual G load on the on the car, the amount of grip you got from the tires, grip from the front, grip from the rear. Assetto course has got it all. It, it communicates everything. It's absolutely bloody amazing. And uh, you know, if you if you drive it with a DD or a well set a wheel, then I don't see how anyone could come to any other conclusion. So that is why we're in Assetto Corsa here. And uh, as I said in the preview video. When you're using the low power pack, the actual forces from the steering wheel or from the wheelbase to the steering wheel are very similar to the forces that you get from the Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase. The only real difference is being that there is a little bit more detail there in terms of especially high frequency detail and there's no mechanical resistance from the wheelbase like it's completely and utterly smooth there's no like notchiness or anything no judder when you brake aggressively or do anything it all, it's all very like seamless and natural and smooth and it just makes sense it, it just feels it just feels smooth and intentional whereas with the uh, with any belt driven wheel and with the CSL Elite there's a tiny little bit of notchiness to it and there's a tiny little bit of sort of uh, built in dampening there I mean to, to be to be honest, I actually really like this CSL Elite, the Fanatec CSL Elite. I think it's a great wheel. I'm also quite a big fan of the Thrustmaster T300 as well. When you look at the price of a T300, it's it's absolutely phenomenal what you get from it. Um, and the and the Fanatec CSL Elite for me is like one of my, or has been for a long time until this came out, my sort of recommended go-to wheel for someone that's looking for something before maybe going into DD wheel territory. Now, one thing I would say is, with the preview unit I've got here, if you've got a CSL Elite already, then I wouldn't say there's enough of a difference between the CSL DD with the low power supply uh, and the CSL Elite to justify sw swapping it over if you were just if you were going to use it with the low power supply. It'd be like. Yeah, there's TSL DD, you know, it's probably going to last longer, it's probably going to be more reliable, and it does have those benefits, I said, but it's not enough of a difference to justify you going through the hassle of selling the wheel you've already got um, to get a CSL Elite, if you're using the low power supply, and if you never intended to upgrade to the high power supply. It's a completely different story when you actually put the high power supply on it. But we're talking about the low power supply at this point in time, or the five... I'll refer to it as the five Newton meter power supply. So, one thing that's the case when you're using uh, wheels like the Thrustmaster T300, uh, the TSPC Racer, the CSL Elite, um, should think of other wheels in that range, one thing that's definitely the case is that you, you still have to be very much on top of the simulator as a driver. Like, it's very easy for you to accidentally overdrive the vehicle. Um, and it's a lot harder to have the wheel really catch the car for you. So when, you, when the rear gets loose or you really start to, you know, you're braking hard, you're really pushing it on the limit, 
and things start getting a bit squirrely, with higher powered direct drive wheels, the wheel tends to do quite a lot of correction for you, or the forces are such that it, it's just one-to-one -one with the simulator at all times, and you can then sort of choose how you let the wheel correct itself and you work with the wheel. Whereas with the low power pack, the five newton meter power supply on this, um, you, as I say, you really have to be on top of the simulator. And it does, it is kind of reminiscent to, you know, I, I personally, I've had a, I've owned myself a T300, a Logitech G25, I've got a Logitech G293, and I've used the CSL Elite for a long time. And it, using the low power supply with the CSL DD really puts me back into that process of driving as I drive with those wheels uh, and weirdly it kind of I think in some ways it does make you a bit more of an attentive driver because you, you really do have to like you have to listen <laughs> through your hands more carefully to to the forces coming from the simulator and you really do have to be on top of things I think you, you I think a lot of uh, sim racers using these lower end wheels probably end up in some ways might end up being better real <laughs> drivers because you really have to be in tune with the visuals of the sim a lot more and uh yeah you just have to really really be on top of things and, uh, uh, almost sort of running the prediction of the simulator in your head more than you, you have to if you're running with a, a a stronger force feedback wheel now because i am using the preview version of the csl dd um, I am only using it with the McLaren GT3 rim, which is a 30cm wheel rim. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I was going to say 30mm. I was just talking about that with someone else earlier. <laughs> That's too small. 30cm uh, wheel rim. And I would say, if you're going to use this with the low power pack, what you'll really want to do is... Um, you'll probably want to use smaller wheel rims. I mean, unless you're really happy with very light force feedback, which a lot of people are, to be honest. But if, if you want as much force feedback as possible from the low power supply, the smaller the wheel rim, obviously, the, the better you're going to get because there's less torque from your arms and the motor doesn't have to work as hard to, to move you, if that makes sense. So you can, you'll feel more of the motor the smaller your wheel rim is. So if you, if you want to get the most out of it, maybe using one of the Fanatec formula rims might be a good idea and also the same thing will apply to some extent with how heavy the wheel rim is so the lighter Fanatec wheel rims will likely be a lot better with the CSL uh, CSL DD's lower power pack uh, so maybe like the WRC wheel rim the, you know the, the the wheel rims that people would typically use with the uh, Fanatec CSL Elite um, but yes, uh, pretty good. It's pretty. It's, it's very similar to the CSL Elite. Pretty good. But let's move over to the eight newton meter power pack and talk about how that drives in this exact same situation. And we're back on the track. If only it was that easy in real life. <laughs> in reality, they'd have had to have closed it four times now due to motorcyclists trying to decapitate themselves into Armco. Right. The uh, the large the large power supply the eight newton meter power supply is there, and uh, we are ready to go here. Now the really nice thing is you can just literally you just plug in the large power supply and straight away you've got the power. And I will say maybe I've been maybe I've been uh, DD spoiled, <laughs> but uh, it just feels so much better straight away. You feel like, you know, you feel like there's a much more of a car under you. So the forces that become much more noticeable when you put the large power pack in, and this is also the case when you use uh, DDs or just more powerful wheels in general. The main thing is, is that you really feel like the, the sort of G-force loading a lot better on the car. And the weight of the vehicle it, it really helps sell the illusion of of you being in a in a mass <laughs> that you're pushing through in this case the german countryside uh, at at a rate of knots you know it really really sells the illusion that you're in a car and so much more so than 
with low with the low power pack in this case and with the with four speed back wheels that just don't have the uh, the force output to them and i think maybe if you're someone that doesn't really use force feedback to drive from maybe that's not gonna be a huge thing but if you really like to like use the force feedback as a reference to how much you can lean on the tires and how much you are loading the car through the corner and how close you are to the limit then it, it, it makes a massive massive difference also if you're going to be using larger wheel rims then you've got that extra force there to still get a good amount of force through the wheel and through, through to your hands despite using a larger or heavier heavier wheel rim of course as well what you also feel with the eight newton meter power pack is just um a little bit more snappiness and response to things like the suspension compressions like if you go hit hit the curbs or you go over a little undulation on the track those little the little details which are very very minute with the low power supply the the five newton meter power pack become just really obvious and just nice <laughs> just nice and firm nice and detailed and again really helps sell more of the illusion that you're in an actual vehicle that's got weight to it and that's <laughs> bouncing around all over the place i also find with the large power supply uh, eight newton meter power supply the car just it's, it's like it's driving itself as well and you're working with it this is really hard to sort of explain unless someone's actually driven a simulator that has good force feedback with a with a sort of stronger force feedback wheel you, you might not even be aware of this but that sensation of you working with the vehicle um is, is so much fun and really takes into just another level that you can't get with the with the low power pack in this case or with lower powered force feedback wheels and the nice thing is when you've got that sense of you working with the vehicle you become much more aware of the vehicle's actual innate personality in the driving simulator because you can feel what the vehicle's trying to do and then you know you come to some kind of there's a bit of conversation there you come to a bit of a compromise with it and hopefully the end result is you get it to it does what it wants to do but you also get it to do what you want to do and uh, that that is just such an addictive quality of sim racing now unfortunately the force feedback in many of the simulators just you know it's really not there <laughs> so unfortunately really a seto corsa certain cars in in r factor 2 um the new force feedback in race room is actually really quite nice that's not out yet but that's quite nice <laughs> um you know you do get cars like automobilista one as well there are there are occasions where the force feedback is quite good in other sims but i would i have to say when you get to like the high power pack the eight newton meter power supply with this um concentrate through here a little bit you when you get to the eight newton meter power supply you, you know you're just getting you, you you get into that zone that you can only really get with D dd wheels and you just it, it, it just takes it to another it takes it to another level i can't put it into better words i can't put it into better words now you know if, if you're just going to play if you're going to play i racing without ir ffb or i don't know acc uh, maybe it doesn't matter i mean the stronger force feedback will with, with ace with both i racing with iiffb and acc you do have really good self-aligning forces in those simulators so it will make driving easier in those sims um for the sense that the back of the car automatically catches itself um so you do you will benefit from it a bit but you know it, it might depend on your driving style and what you look for from force feedback because there's definitely a lot of drivers out there that i don't think really actually use the force feedback to drive the cars that much whereas there's some drivers like me where it's like 
force feedback and feeling what's going on in this sim is like 99% of the simulator. I don't drive from the visuals, I drive from what I feel through my hands. And I think if I'm driving, or when I've driven go-karts, go-karts are so abrupt it's hard to really say, but I think if I was driving a decent sports car in reality, I'd be driving through my backside and what I, the G-forces. I wouldn't be driving through the visuals, you know? So, you know, for me, um, the, the high power pack and stronger force feedback um, is the way to go. <laughs> it's the way to go. And I would say, in, in this case, when it comes to the Fanatec CSL DD, my recommendation would be, if possible, just try and get the high power su supply version. Like, it's worth stretching the money to get that over the low power pack. Um, you know, sure, you could get the low power pack version. I guess you could upgrade at a later date. But you would have, you'll have, you'll have this like piece of equipment there that you're not fully utilising. That would drive me mental. So in some ways, it's a little bit annoying. Let's keep trundling whilst I talk a bit here. In some ways, it'd be, it's a little bit annoying that Fanatec haven't just <laughs> done done the CSL DD for like. I mean, maybe like another 60, 60 pounds, 70 pounds, and then it just comes with the one power supply, and that's what you get, and that's just where it is. But, you know, I, here we go, I'm going to crash here. <laughs> but I, I, underst I understand uh, why they've done what they've done to, to get that price down. It's especially going to be relevant when it comes to uh, selling these wheels. At, at this point in time, it's got Xbox compatibility, but, you know, I'm sure they'll do like a PlayStation version. I'm sure they'll do packages uh, like what you saw with the um, the F1 uh, esports uh, edition of the CSL Elite and you know when you when you get those bundles which they they come sometimes with the pedals and the wheel and everything the pricing of it all sort of makes more sense there but part of me likes that sort of simplicity of oh there's a company doing one product <laughs> and that's it and uh, I'm definitely I'm sure Fanatec's going to get a lot of grief from the uh, power supply uh, from the way they've done the power supply, so you know I understand why they've done it from a from a business perspective, and I think actually even from a consumer perspective, it's going to be beneficial for a lot of people in that they're going to be able to get access to something and upgrade it, upgrade it at a later date. But I mean, you know, if you've never driven a Seto Corsa with a <laughs> with a good quality force feedback wheel and driven around the Nordschleife uh, you could just do it oh <laughs> you could just do it non-stop I highly recommend also doing it with vintage vehicles just keep going forever around this one track like a lunatic absolutely amazing well you notice actually we're coming up to this section it's worth saying so the, these um, when we hit the curb back there that's the kind of situation that's a little bit harder to catch with a lower powered wheel and the low power supply on this and this section here, actually, I particularly noticed, whilst I was doing a lot of the testing of this uh, CSL DD preview unit, um, here, this corner coming up um, on the brakes, next one. So when you're braking here, and when you're trail braking, you come down this corner, this is the kind of corner where the back gets very loose, you've got the car loaded up, and you can lose it quite easily, or you're going to have to balance it right at the limit. And uh, nicely, with the high power su supply, that's not hard to do in a Seto Corsa because you can feel what the weight of the car is doing, you can feel where the tyres are, you can hold it, you can work with it, even though it's the kind of corner that absolutely kills sim physics and is a nightmare to drive, also probably very hard in reality as well. The high power pack, uh, the, the 8 newton meters, is enough to really make that quite obvious what to do and, and, and relatively easy to be honest whereas with the five newton meter power supply corners like that are just way way harder um than i think they otherwise would be because you just you just lack that load and immediacy to be able to really get all those details for you to then respond to the very dynamic and very dynamic transient and in some ways quite light at the limit situation um so yeah but I think that pretty much covers it, you know, <laughs> for for the main differences that in this in this uh, more long-winded video. That as you can now understand why I didn't include this in the uh, in the preview video. Um, but hopefully, hopefully this has helped you decide. 
as I say, if you can afford it, just get the high power pack. <laughs> Obviously, some people can't, but hey, so much better with the high power pack. But hopefully, this has helped you decide. Uh, if it has, let me know. If it hasn't, let me know. Um, but uh, I look forward to your comments. As always, if you're buying Fanatec equipment, remember I do have a Fanatec affiliate link. I really appreciate people using that because it helps support me in what I do. But, um, but <laughs> until the next video, thanks for watching. Happy tea drinking and goodbye, everybody.